RBB Morning Show, the coach, mentor, marketing, and social media strategist you need each and every morning. RBB, a live morning talk show that gives you the ability to get the coach you need, strategist you wish you could afford, social media manager and strategist, marketing strategist, project manager, certified OBM, VA, business startup strategist, profit strategist, web strategist, email funnel strategist, sales page strategist, PR strategist, time management, mindset, and overall business development strategist. We answer it all. With over 25 years of business experience, both in corporate and small business worlds, we really can answer it all. Good morning, everybody. I hope you're all having an amazing Thursday. I got a bonus Thursday this week. I'm happy because I'm home. I was originally supposed to be traveling today and client needed to change things up. So I am still at my desk, which makes me happy. Tomorrow morning, however, I will be on the road and traveling and Gina is going to be in charge of running the live. Poor Gina. Yay. (laughs) (laughs) So today is Thursday. It is the best Thursday ever because we are finally done building all of our funnels. Woohoo! That was a lot of clicking. <laughs> and then permanent roommate, even I was showing it to him last night and he was critiquing because he knows so much. That's when you just want to slap somebody. I, I really did. I wanted to, I really, I was. I really had to restrain from just whacking him over the head with my iPad. Make sure you say hi this morning. Uh, we are, okay. Everybody's here. Well, not everybody's here, but Sandra's here. Some uh, other people are watching. I don't know who. Say hi. Please let us know hi. you're here. It doesn't always let us know everybody's here, which is so weird, but. It's Facebook. Today, we're talking about content is king. Great. We all know that. What's good content mean? (laughs) I get asked. I literally, I counted this morning. I have 75 questions all asking about how to write good content. 75 questions. Not kidding. Well, you could let (laughs) us write it for you. That's a good start. Well, yes. Hire somebody like us. We have award-winning content writers. Uh, Some of us have been doing it since, oh, before there was social media. Actually, I think I'm pretty much the only person that does that. That No, maybe Bethany. Bethany writes amazing content and is award-winning. And Bethany, I love you, Bethany, but Bethany's a few years older than me. So so there is somebody who's been doing it longer than me around here. Now I feel a little better. Oh, my God. We are talking about good content and what makes good content. So I'm going to tell you right now. No secret sauce. There is no secret sauce. Period. There is no secret sauce, people. What does that mean? There is no exact formula that is going to work for everybody. There is no exact formula that's going to work for every VA or every coach or every system strategist or every OBM. There is no secret sauce. There, I answered your question on good content. Yep, there's no Uh, template to follow. There's no. Don't buy. There are so many people out there selling. I just saw the most recent one I saw is somebody is going to be selling a monthly subscription where they send you a weekly template to follow, where it'll only take you, what, 90 minutes a week to write all of your content, including a blog post and all that. Oh my gosh, your content is going to be so bad if you do that. That is terrible. Gina, I think it was Gina that said that to me. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's just going to be bad. It was me. Because there is no secret template or sauce or anything that's going to work for everybody. And this drives me crazy when I say, well, follow my template or buy my template. I saw somebody selling something for $9.97. What will help you write a whole entire years of content in eight hours or less. First of all, I'm a content strategist, a social media strategist, and a marketing strategist. The strategy that goes into writing for my clients takes me a while uh, to put together. I, For me to write somebody's content strategy and their social media strategy, marketing strategy, takes me about two hours 
per month to write that and do a really, really in-depth. Now, there are some basic strategies that I've given you guys, the follow the who, what, where, when, why, and how. That's a good basic strategy to follow, and that works for pretty much everybody if you're a small business. Now, an agency, it does not work for me. That would be a very, very bad way for me to write our strategy. Um, it would not be very professional if I did that because our agency clients don't care. Our agency clients want to know who, what we do, what we provide. They want tangible. Um, your clients also want that. So that who, what, where, when, why, and how when you're first starting is great. But like Sandra is following that right now. I've given her a strategy, but Sandra, I have a strategy for you that's a bit more tailored directly to you. I know what you do. I, I've helped you write a strategy that you're following right now, getting started, that's good for you. But I wouldn't give LaToya, who's also a VA, I wouldn't give LaToya that same strategy because that's not going to work for LaToya quite the same. The basic idea behind it, yes, but not going to work. Now, Gina, when Gina was an OBM, I absolutely would not have given that to any part of what I've given you, Sandra, as a strategy because she's highly systemized and highly technical and highly strategic. That would I would need to build out a completely different strategy for her. So anybody that promises that you could do, they could send you a template that will work for you, BS. And they'll send you the template that's worked for them. Great. I'm glad it's worked for them. Maybe you can gain some ideas and some creative ideas behind doing some strategy for yourself, but don't follow their strategy word for word. It's not going to work. Period. You can pull Good. nuggets from what other people have yes, done. Yes, absolutely. But like, we're not saying don't um, watch other people and see what they're doing. Oh, and them. Gina, one Gina of my, I do that all the time. One of my favorite things to do when I see uh, a major player who's got a webinar or some sort of free thing that they're putting out, I love to opt into it because I want to see their funnel. <laughs> I want to see what they're writing. I want to see how they're sending out their emails. I want to see how they're what, how they're doing their messenger bots. Like I, like I'm signing, you know, I'm signing up for, to research, you know, so research is great. Please do that. And you'll find a combination. Like, so there's one, one guy that I can think of. There's two people I can think of who I've followed for a while. And one of their funnel strategies, I like one of the other ones. I don't necessarily so, but I pull elements of it all in together and then create my own unique way of doing things. Um, and that that's how you should be doing it. Not just, not, there's no one size fits all in business. And it, like everybody really needs to stop looking for the business and the business in a box because that doesn't exist. So, um, and we can't help that because we are conditioned for business in a box, like marketing and advertising over the years, like, hey, Sharon, good, good morning. Good morning, Sharon. Marketing, marketing and advertising over the years has convinced us, you know, like, I caught like, okay, so what was, what was that dude's name? The infomercial dude. Billy Mays? Him, yes. <laughs> Yes, I think I, I'm, I swear to you, like infomercials were like the, the world's worst thing that could have possibly happened in the marketing and advertising world because absolutely, but it, but it conditions it's conditioned people now where we're looking for the magic thing, the magic formula, because, oh, my gosh, this magic piece of tape will tape up your boat. and You can still drive it like I mean, stuff like that, like 1995, yeah. like and it'll change your life, like so type stuff. So Sandra, what about sites that sell content? Okay, well, like Brittany Moffat does sell content, but okay, but Brittany writes custom content for you. Yes. It's customized somebody, content. Somebody who sells just basic content to use? No. Somebody who's going to write content for you? Absolutely. I mean, that's what we do. Um, absolutely, yes, because like I said, I invest time in that client. I go through so many different steps. I have a 15-step process to designing a strategy. I know I'm not sharing that with you, uh, <laughs> but I have a 15-step process that I have to design a strategy for a client. 
Um, now we've had clients where we write for other agencies and they literally say, go to their website. Uh, I, I just create something and they'll give us those basic templates of uh, talk about a new car, talk about uh, a service they offer, talk about this, talk about that. But there's no, there's no real guidance there. Okay. That's a basic template and, and that's okay. But when I go back and look at a client like that, and I look at the post that we were writing for that client's clients, they have no interaction. They have no likes. They have their page sucks. Um, it's bad. And the only way that they're gaining anything for that client is by paying for big time ads for that client. Um, it's content creation for the sake of content creation. There's no thought or intention behind it. And, and that's bad for a Just client. And, and stuff up. To it, that it, something there. It, and when we were doing this for our client, I would tell my team never do anything this way. I find this highly, and I hate that there are agencies out there um, that do that for their clients because that's horrible. I mean, they're they're writing email content that's a form that they're just basically rewriting the same four things every month and cycling them around. That's terrible. Um, they're the templates that, I mean, they had like three or four templates that they would cycle around between each client. And so every four months you were basically repeating the content. That's terrible. I mean, there's always, you're always going to have pillar posts and, and certain things that, because I mean, you're writing about their services, you're writing about what they're selling, whatever that are going to be very similar every month. Um, and we have pillar posts that we share every month and we've got about 20 of them that we cycle through right now because I haven't built out the rest. Um, but you have those pillar posts and that's okay. But the rest of your content should be fresh, new, innovative every time. Um, those template things or, or those, the, those pre-made things that are for one, one size fits all things are not one size fits all. It, if you're going to have good content, if you, if you're not looking for good content and you're looking for just content for the sake of having content, then absolutely buy one of those that will make life so easy for you. Well, I'm not saying that, that it's necessarily a bad thing because we all have points where we just need to create something and we can't think we can't create, we don't have time, whatever that is. But that's why that's why you, that's one of those things that you should invest in. If you are struggling to do that on your own, investing in that content and investing in that time and effort for somebody else to put that serious time and effort and creativity into your content is really important. Um, and good content is very, like I said, very, very different for every single client. It's so important that as an agency, as a social media manager, as a social media content creator, as a blog post creator, all of those things that you are creating unique and well done content. Um, it's not a Gina just thought of something. I can see her little brain going over there. She's writing something down. Sorry. Oh. So you just so you guys know, I, I have this odd little skill um, where I can hear one line and create any product off of it or or create a service <laughs> or, or come up with, or come up with um, a webinar around it or something, some, or a blog post is I can hear one line and then all of a sudden can create something off of it. So if you guys ever see, and I have a very distinctive face when it hits. So if you, if you see it and you see me just going and reaching over and grabbing my little iPad and my little pencil, y'all don't mind me. Um, <laughs> it means that you've got something cool that's coming. So we, I really want to press help because there are so many people out there selling these instant, instant content things. There's no, and I'm going to keep, repeating this i'm going to repeat it all the time there is no business in a box there is no content in a box because this is the thing that I, we want you guys to really think about so social media humanizes your business right you want your marketing to connect with your potential clients and um if you are ripping somebody else's stuff off 
um, or, or not necessarily, I wouldn't call it ripping off, but like, let's say they gave you a template or something and it's like a verbatim swipe file. Yes. So, and that's what you're using and it doesn't sound like you, um, then like the client is going to have one view of you from your marketing. And then they sit down and they meet you and you are the complete opposite of what it was that they thought that you were or what you did or what you thought that you would be. So really keep that in mind. Um, when it comes to your content marketing, somebody's been in here moving stuff around on my desk. Uh, okay. Sorry, you guys, <laughs> ADD. Um, but when it comes to your content marketing, that's your voice. That is you sitting down and having a conversation with somebody every single day about your about yourself, your services, your offerings, your business. So why would you why would you want to template that? You're not a template. You're a 100 percent absolutely unique person with your own thoughts, feelings, emotions, personality. And why would you not want to infuse that into everything that you do? Because that is your brand. Your brand is not somebody else's voice. Now, I'm a fan of swipe files when you're trying to learn and understand. I use like swipe files. If somebody's offering a swipe file, great. Grab the swipe file so you can sit down and you can read and you can really study and look at the format and look what they put in there. And then you can go off and it will help you start learning how to think in that way to then you can start writing your own. So I do want to acknowledge that content writing is a skill that you have to kind of develop because it's making your brain think in a different way, which is why you're looking for templates and looking for somebody to just hand it to you because it, it, if, if it doesn't come natural to you, it takes, it takes a minute to learn, but we want to encourage you to yes, leverage resources, but still write your own. You have to practice. And then eventually you won't need to look for those resources. Look for those resources. So look through it through that perspective is I'm not looking for a quick fix. I'm looking for something that's giving me some examples so that I can learn from because most of us that are creatives are visual learners. So we have to see it. So I'll do you one better rather than signing up for another email list or sitting through another uh, something that somebody's going to pitch you a uh, standard thing that you know is going to be a standard template, go follow somebody else in your industry on Instagram and on Facebook. Look at their content. Get ideas of what you can create. I mean, I will tell you, I mean, I've been creating content for 20 something years. And you run out of ideas, especially when you're in one industry. So I was writing for the same exact business for 15 years and having to come up with new content all the time. You want to know what I did? I I followed HP, I followed IBM, I followed Dell, I followed Unitrends, I followed, I mean, I looked at what some of the big, big names in my industry were writing and took ideas from that and got, and it helped the creative juices get flowing. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to, to look at Jenna Kutcher or I, I'm trying to think of somebody big name in the VA worlds. Jasmine Star, whoever. I can't think of any names. Um, I love to peruse Pinterest. That's where I go. I, I, I just, look at Pinterest a lot. I um, use Pinterest all the time for any kind but, of inspiration. But Instagram is actually really better for content, for looking at content. Go troll Jenna Kutcher. Go troll Jasmine Star. Go Jenna Kutcher. I like, I need to go like sit down and start studying her again because I love the way she does her Instagram. Exactly. I love the way she does her Instagram. Okay. And, and I'm going to tell you a secret. I know her social media person. She doesn't write. I mean, she does write some of the posts, but she doesn't write all of them. Uh, she has a full team behind her that does 90% of her work now. So keep that in mind, first of all, is that she has outsourced that to make her look better. That's that's their job. You can always tell when I'm somebody when the, somebody has brought a professional in because all of a sudden their feed looks all of their social media, their their photos, everything looks really elevated. It looks elevated, but it doesn't necessarily look super curated. Uh, now Jenna is super curated. I hate that in her Instagram feed, uh, and that is not a necessary thing as far as the content is. Does not have to look super cookie cutter as far as every single post doesn't have to look exactly the same. Uh, there are big brands 
in this this one I know for sure, uh, Saks Fifth Avenue and Estee Lauder have actually hired and brought in consultants from our world to tell them how to do better on Instagram because things were too highly cookie cutter looking. They're looking to look less cookie cutter, but still very professional and elevated and elegant. Uh, so keep that in mind. You don't have to have everything matchy, 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 but your content does. Yep. And I will admit I'm slightly OCD, you guys. So like, I like for everything to have the same filter on it and look the same. So it's the same look every single time. Um, but that is my OCD. Between, there's a difference between a filter for everything to have the same kind of tone to it and everything looking exactly the same. <laughs> So maybe you should clarify that because I like to, because yes. a lot of people think that when they say like curated or like all that, they think it's using the same filter. So it all looks the, the same. So the Jenna, Jenna Kutcher has every picture has the her pink background and it's inset with a picture of her. And the wording is always the same. So it looks, even though the center picture might be slightly different each time, it looks exactly the same every time. Now, there are other feeds, um, trying to think, I can't think of anybody off the top of my head, um, that are, they have their pictures that they have, whether it's stock photos or selfies, and they use the same filter over the top of the pictures every time so that there's a tone to the feed. That is a really, really good, 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 good strategy. Uh, the Jenna Kutcher strategy, people tend to stop paying attention to it after a while. So that's something important when you're trying to get attention in the first place. Honestly, Jenna just needs to put content out there and a thousand people like it. I guarantee you 90% of the people don't even read her content anymore because they don't care. They love her. They don't need to. They're going to love anything she puts out there. Yes. And that you, you don't have that yet. You have no luxury when it comes to your social media. You want to grab attention every single time. Should your pictures have a same, a similar tone? Yes, I've gone through this. I do, uh, I do the strategy for an indie beauty brand or did at one point. Um, she now has hired a internal marketing person. Uh, and we spent a lot of time curating what the color themes for her pictures were and her new marketing person who used to work for Estee Lauder has kept to that. We've designed a theme. Her theme is what it is and very earthy tones, but bright earthy, not darks and rusts and brown, but bright greens, healthy, vibrant greens and healthy, vibrant colored flowers and things like that. And her new marketing person has been there six months, eight months now and is keeping to that same theme because it's what matches her branding and it goes with everything she does. That's and but not every picture is exactly the same, nor does it need to be, nor should it be, especially when you're a smaller brand. So when you say every picture is the same, you literally mean like the exact same desk cape every day or the exact same. Um, they might be slight different uh, configurations of the exact same picture all the time. Once in a while, Jenna will have a picture at the beach where she's standing at the beach, but the frame for it, the wording around it, everything else in the tone over the picture itself is all exactly the same. So the internal picture in the middle of the picture frame changes from time to time, well, often, but that's it. That's not enough to catch your attention when scrolling past something. A bright pop of color in your theme or something strange or different or that catches people's attention, but it still needs to be on brand. Going past my feed and seeing me standing in a field in a beautiful boho dress, uh, like flowing in the wind would be definitely catch your attention because that has nothing to do with my branding. People will be like, what the heck is up with you? Which may be a good thing, good thing for me to do at some point because people will be like, what the heck? What are you now, doing? I know I would. You would get, I would be the first one going, what the heck? What, the, what are you doing? <laughs> now, me standing in a bar with a guitar in my hand and singing. That's what people expect to see from me. 
make sure that you are on brand with everything you're doing. It's always very, very, very important. Yeah, I don't think anybody would be like, I think people would be surprised if they saw a picture of me frolicking in a field too. Yeah, that's just uh, not me. Not me, not me at all. Now, sitting in a tattoo shop, somewhere on the water somewhere, with a book in my hand, probably, that's normal. (laughs) So just make sure that you're sticking to your branding because all of your content, your content isn't just your written piece. It's also how you look online. Make sure that it's you. And not Jenna Kutcher, not Jasmine Starr, not whatever other influencers are out there. So, like, if you look, like, you can see Danielle and I both have vastly different aesthetics, right? So you can look at Danielle. She's bright, very in your face, like, colorful. I am more muted. (laughs) And I would expect our respective feeds to reflect these two things. Exactly. And mine does. My personal feed is all over the place because I don't care. I, I'm not, I haven't even, I don't use the same filter that's, ever. But that's you also. I'm all over the place. I'm ADHD and boy, you'll know it if you look at my feed. Um, when you see me traveling, you'll see me posting a ton on my Instagram while I travel and I'm going to have a little bit of everything. I also have been hired as an influencer by the walking company. So I'm going to have pictures of my feet in places in New York City, which is weird. That's odd. Uh, I'm getting paid to do that. So my Instagram feed is going to be interesting. Um, but I post a ton when I'm traveling and lots of pic- selfies and just what I'm up to. People want to see that. Um, you'll see me posting on Facebook too. But that's me. I go from I'm gone because I'm hyper-focused on something to I'm crazy and I'm all over the place. And But that's very much me. But my business is not like that. My business is very curated um, and very intentional with everything we post so just keep that in mind that a your content has to really reflect you and not other people and not be a template that everybody else is using because think about this if if five million people buy that template you've got five million accounts out there now writing exactly the same thing how are you going to stand out from the crowd when you're using something like that Simple question. Bless you. Mm, excuse me. So keep that in mind. You don't want to use a template because you're the whole idea of growing your business is standing out from the crowd and being able to be seen. You can't be seen when you're doing what everybody else is doing. Be unique, you guys. Don't be afraid to be unique either. I think a lot of, especially women, are afraid to stand out from the crowd. Well, think about it. When we were in high school, like if you were the, if you were different, then you got a pack of girls that were attacking you at any given point of the day. I know that that was my experience. So like you could like, yeah, well, I I will tell you, I I was ultimate mean cheerleader. I was mean cheerleader girl. I was a nerdy band chick, but I I was in band, but I I went to a very small school district. There were 30 people that graduated from my, Mm. my, my class in school but so we all did everything but I was mean to people that were different so and that that's how we're conditioned uh as women if we if we are different in any way shape form or fashion we're going to be attacked and we're going to be shunned and so we can we bring that conditioning into our business and that's why you see a billion new women business owners and Everybody has the same branding and everybody has the same. I I love that every and B boss girl had this at one point because I allowed other people to make a decision. Our logo was that pretty rose gold swoosh in the background with her name over the top of it in gold. Everybody Mm -hmm. else has that logo. Now you like Danielle had a new one designed. I'm happy to say I made the suggestion of the watercolor (laughs) and it's totally different. The Be Boss Girl, like, it is so different. You are not going to see any other Lego out there like that. You're absolutely not. And, 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 heck, we added a new name and new piece of branding for our funnel, and we got a little ninja guy. And I love him. <laughs> I was so excited. And, like, Permanent Roommate was looking at it last night. He was like, he looks so angry. You don't want angry. I'm like, he's a ninja. Ninjas are pissy. <laughs> 
We like that. <laughs> this is the whole point. And I was like, you know what? And here we are. We're sitting again at the crossroads of the nerd and the jock. Yep. <laughs> Once again. <laughs> so my husband thought it was the funniest thing ever. Hey, so. hey, thank you, Art. Tell Art I said thank you for the backup. So my husband very rarely doesn't. Well, no, I'm not going to say he always agrees with me because that's not true. We're both very stubborn. But <laughs> but he, he usually likes where I go for breathing and stuff like that. But just be you. Don't be afraid to be you. I am totally not afraid to be me. I dress differently than most people, especially I have walked into board meetings in a band t-shirt and blue jeans. Well, not blue jeans. I wear black jeans. I upgraded a little. Um, but don't be afraid to be you. Be uniquely you. That is what your selling point is, is to be uniquely you. Don't offer the same services that the next person that is in your industry offers. Find a unique way to package them. Do them because you are you. And I think even I, it's it's taken me almost a year to get to the point where I feel like I can do that again. But my personality has never been like everybody else's. But even I tried to take my business so it matched everybody else. And that doesn't work. It did not work. I did, did it not too. work long term for me. Yeah, I did it too. I tried to fit in uh, somehow or another. When I first came into the space, I found myself in the, the super woo, the super spiritual, like nobody made any sense. And everybody was like, you have to meditate with crystals. And that's the only way that your business is going to like, that's how your business is going to thrive. And I'm like, how are you onboarding your clients? You know, like, I mean, like stuff like that. So like, and I found myself trying to, and you know, the super vulnerable posts and the super and like all of the stuff that is just inherently not me. And I tried to fit into that realm and it never worked. It never worked. And I was miserable. You guys, like I was so miserable because I was trying to fit in, in a place one where I didn't, belong and that's okay you're not meant to belong everywhere and two I was I mean it was it all went against my like my whole personality like none of it like none of it matched um so make sure that your social media and your content again make sure it's you because when you start matching everybody who, who cares about working with you they're going to work with a person with more numbers and, and more flash than you yeah so like just be yourself and find your people. That's the other thing is you have to find your people. Um, and it like the internet is vast. So you just keep, keep looking until you come at, like you come across the, like the realm of people that fits for you. And that's okay. You guys, it's okay. We're in such a hurry. We're all in such a hurry to get to the end goal, to get to the thing, to hit the success. And I think a lot of it has to do with we're so afraid of judgment that if we don't hit it like immediately, like everybody in and around us is going to judge us um, and call us a failure. Well, you guys are going to be judged when you're successful. They're going to judge you for that. So you're going to get judged even more when you're a success than you do when you're failing. Yeah. So you might as well take your time, do it right and find the way to make it be fun while you're at it. Business can be fun. Danielle and I enjoy it. We work very hard, but we have fun and that's how it should be. So you have to find, like, if you're going to go into business for yourself, like don't make yourself miserable. Don't become another employee of your company. I mean, if you're going to do that, you might as well go back to corporate and working for somebody else, or at least you have a consistent check and benefits. So if you're like, so if you're going to do it, then do it your way. This yeah. is really driving me crazy. I think Rusty came in here. <laughs> Gina, chill. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, there's what you need to know about good content. There is no magic sauce. Be yourself. Be, 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 be yourself. And become you. Again, RBB. Rise, become, and be. Find who you are in your business and talk about that. Yes. So have an amazing Thursday. Tomorrow morning, I am going to be joining you from my car. So Gina will be in charge of recording and reading all of your comments and reading them to me because I will not be able to see them from my phone. 
Uh, you all have an amazing day. Remember to rise, become and be everything in your business and find your uniqueness today. Have a great day, everybody. RBB Morning Show, the coach, mentor, marketing, and social media strategist you need each and every morning.